Hey guys, in this video today, you're gonna to see a quick 15 minute chipping and putting practice routine. All right guys, so what I wanna show you today is a 15 minute chipping and putting practice. This is something that I use if I'm kinda of short on time, if I have 15, 20, 30 minutes um, before I have something to do, and something that a lot of my players will do uh, like that, maybe a pre-round uh, little practice routine, or just if you're, if you're short on time. Uh, a lot of people don't seem to put a lot of time aside for chipping and putting, so 15 minutes. Now, because we only have 15 minutes to do this, we have to really heighten our focus on what we're gonna pay attention to. Now, I choose to do my chipping practice first before my putting, personal preference. You could flip the order here. Basically with chipping, there's two things I want to highlight that to me are non-negotiables regardless of skill level or where you're at. Number one with chipping is solidness of contact. So the first part of your practice should be focused on hitting the ball solid, right? Seems like duh, but then we have to heighten focus on that. So this would be like block practice doing the things in your chipping you need to do to ensure you're hitting the ball solid. The second part of the chipping practice will be landing zones. So if we have like a priority board of chipping priorities, it's solid contact first, landing zone second. Landing zones mean being able to fly the ball and land it exactly where you want. I'll show you how to practice that. And then after that, we would do some trajectory or distance control practice. So let's dig into it. We're gonna do the solid contact first, then I'll show you landing zones. Now for solidness of contact, this is all relative to where you're at. Like for me right now, I don't have a ton of things with my chipping I need to do to hit the ball solid. If you have a couple things you need to focus on, this would be the time to focus on them and give yourself feedback just like the full swing. So for me, the only real thing that I'm looking for right now when I'm chipping is I have a tendency for me to add a lot of hinge and then sort of hijack it in transition and hinge more and throw it at the problem or like get handsy kind of is, is the situation. So for me, when I'm practicing, I might throw something in like a tour striker smart ball for feedback, something along those lines. Basically the feels I have is I feel like Steve Stricker, like I'm not hinging at all, like I'm not hinging at all, and then I have my stomach turning on both sides. That's basically what I feel like. Again, because I'm coming from here and here, I like to go here and here. When, that, when you watch it, that probably looks like normal, but for me, it feels like Steve Stricker. So what I would do to start off my practice is potentially not even chip towards a hole, just chip five, 10, uh, maybe 15 shots max, kind of in the middle of the green, trying to hit the ball solid, thinking about my mechanical piece. So I just have a 50, 60 degree sand wedge, and I'm gonna hit one or two in the beginning, no target, just kind of middle-ish of the green, just to feel out these pieces and see if I can get some solid contact going. Not really concerned with how far short they go yet, I'm just hitting solid contact. For me, feeling those uh, little wrist mechanics. And I would do a couple until satisfied. You know, if I feel good with this right off the bat, I might do only five golf balls. Like I might literally only hit five to the middle of the green and say, hey, I feel good with my contact. Um, I'm done with that. I'm gonna move on to landing zones. So I did three there. I'll do maybe one or two more just to get a sense of my feels. And that all feels good for me. And now if I'm going to play right after this, I'm not overly concerned about feedback. I just want to know, hey, I feel like when I stay unhinged, I'm hitting it solid. That's a feel I can go play with. If I'm in practice, not going to play, I'll probably record this or give myself more feedback to see what I'm actually doing. So that's four of them, one more kind of for me feeling no hinge, just solid contact. And that all feels good. Now, if you're not hitting the ball solid, you can't just cruise through that or if you're really working on mechanical pieces, you might spend more or all of your time here. If you can't hit the ball solid, then it doesn't make as much sense to do the landing zone. You gotta get solid contact first, stay on the side of the green, focus on the mechanics you need to focus on to just get the ball on the green every time. So some of the things that we would be looking for in a stock chip shot if you're not hitting the ball solid, from the down the line view, um, if I'm kind of chipping towards the middle, really the things I'm looking for are distance away from the ball and swing plane. Now that's overly simplistic, but those are sort of the basics. Meaning a lot of people get too far away from the ball, fully gripped up. I like you to be pretty darn close to the ball, maybe not much more than a grip away from your right foot would be how close I'd get. I'd grip down for that. So that would be one, are you close enough to the golf ball? Number two is I really want to avoid any backswing being too far under plane right on the plane would be good, or just outside of my plane, if you were to kind of draw a plane line through the shaft at address, right on that or slightly outside. 
those are some of the things I'm looking for. I'm also trying to make sure that you don't get the club face tilted way down going back. That's going to be too much leading edge. So from the down the line angle, then Mary will hop over. We'll do some face on. Those are kind of the three pieces we're looking for. And then once we get into a uh, face on position, you know, again, some of the stock things I'd be looking at from my from my normal is, hey, is the ball position um, kind of just inside the right heel as stock, not overly back, not overly forward, not a ton of shaft lean from here. You know, I'm looking for my heels to be pretty close together, not a lot of shoulder tilt, right? These are some of the things we're looking at, guys. If you take your setup position, you see any of those are probably gonna have problems. I like just a neutral amount of hinge rates on both sides, a little chest turn. So this is meant to be about practice, but those are some of the pieces that you're looking at. Stay here, work with a coach until you get solid contact. Now, I'm gonna go grab the golf balls I hit, and then I'll show you guys how to do the landing zones. So after we do the solidness of contact, the next part is landing zones. This is the next step that's key to take your chipping on the course in proximity um, to the hole to the next level. So I just have a normal towel um, that I use. And what I do when I do landing zones is I walk up on the green and I start with my first landing zone being a yard on the green. So here's the edge of the green. I walk on one pace. And now I'll lay this towel down, just kind of full length as is. Over time, as you get better, I might you know kind of cut the towel in half, but the point here is I'm going to try and hit the ball and make it land on the towel. Now, there's a ton of different variations of this, and we'll get more in detail on kagornogolf.com with these. But basically, in the beginning, you want to get good at hitting the towel, OK? Taking your solidness of contact and now putting a distance with it. And there's different rules. Maybe in the beginning, you say, hey, I'm going to chip to the first towel until I hit it three times in a row. Maybe I'm going to do it 10 times in a row, maybe 10 total shots. So I might do this and say, hey, I'm going to chip from here until I hit the towel three times. And all I'm doing is I'm feeling my same mechanical feels. I'm looking at the towel once or twice before I hit. And then I'm just going to see if I can get my distance control. That was way long. See if I can get my distance control down where I'm able to fly the ball only as far as I want to. So that's just shy, but much closer. And we'll do the same thing. And I'm just trying to get a feel for how close I can get to the towel. And, and, and again, you kind of change the rules based on your skill level. So kind of the more advanced you'd get, the harder you'd make the rules. Obviously, the shorter one's a little harder for me. And I'd get to the point where I would hit it um, maybe two or three times. And as soon as I can hit it from one pace on, I just move the towel back another pace. So I'll walk on. I'll pretend I hit it three times there. And I'll walk on, and I'll put it about one more yard on. And this will be my second spot. Now, today happens to be windy, so I'll put a ball or two on the towel just to get it neutral. And when I'm doing this from now, I'm just kind of chipping from the same spot. Remember, this is a 15 minute routine, so it's kind of about efficiency. And now I'll do the same thing. And I got my second towel just a little bit farther, still thinking my mechanical pieces. And now I'm trying to have it land on the towel just a little bit farther away and see how good my feels are. And I can see I need to spend a little more time on this because I am a little rusty. So same thing right on the towel. No hinge back and forth, a little bit deep, and we'll do one more. Good, that was about right on the edge. And then I would move the towel back one more spot, and as I'm going through, I'm seeing what my performance is like. If I run through and I hit the towel two, three, four times in a row, I'm good here. I'm going to check mark that box and move on. If this, this tells me I'm a little rusty with it, I got to do this a little bit more. That's fine. I knew that coming into it. Or if, hey, I'm really good at the second and third spot, but I'm not so good at the first spot. Let me increase my time there or find a solution. So if you only have 15 minutes, spend your time in chipping on solid contact pieces. Work with a coach to figure out what you need to do to improve the contact. If you're already hitting it solid, do just a warm up and get really good at landing zones. That's how I'd spend the 15 minutes. Now, if you had more time beyond this, or this was easy, what I would do is I'd put those same towels there again, one yard, two yard, three, four, five paces on, and start working trajectories. So now I'd want to hit one low to the first towel, medium to the first towel, high to the first towel. Low, medium, high, second towel, you get it, low, medium, high. That would be a more advanced version. And then at the end, I'd do some form of up and down game. So in a perfect routine, if you had like a half hour or an hour, I'd do solid contact first landing zones second, trajectories to the landing zones third, and then do an up and down game at the end where you kept score. That way you can track your progress over time. So that'd be my quick little chipping version. Let's talk about a quick little uh, putting version for you guys. 
Okay, so now we completed the chipping portion of the practice. A little bit of solid contact, a little landing zone. Now, got a couple minutes to practice my putting. What do I want to do? Well, with putting, there's really a couple of main skills, uh, three big ones, start line control, speed control, and green reading. Start line, speed, green reading. Now, in this particular drill, and if I only have 15 minutes or 10 or five minutes, I want to make sure that my mechanics are good and I focus on start line control. To me, getting the ball started on the line you want is the most important skill. You could argue speed as well, but we're not going to do speed control practice here. We're going to do a start line and short distance make percentage. So if you've seen some of our putting videos before, we always advocate having a station, right? Almost all good players have a station they practice with, and you should be doing that in this portion of your practice as well. Uh, we've done videos on gate drills. You search the putting videos. What I have is a little Vizio line. Serves the same way. Something you can use for feedback to make sure your setup's good, your ball position, and your putter path. And I can add a bunch of different variations. I just have a little Vizio line. And what I'll do is I try and find about a three to five footer straight uphill, and I'm working on my stroke and my start line here. So the first thing I wanna do when I practice always is just ensure my fundamentals are good. I like this because it gives me a little alignment aid. I can make sure my eye line's where I want, and it gives me a little bit of guidance for my putter path. Right, ultimately, if my putter path is pretty darn neutral back and through, if I use the tees and have a gate drill, the odds of me getting the ball started online are, are very high. So for me, I make sure my putter face is good, getting my eye line good, and I'm making sure my putter path is about neutral. Now, if I'm doing a little 10, 15, 20 minute practice, what I'm doing is probably five to 10 balls in the beginning to rehearse that, making sure I'm grabbing my feels. And then I'll show you sort of the second part of this practice. I wanna then transfer these into a short distance make percentage. So what I'll do after I do about 10 of these is I'll hop over and I'll do a couple left to right putts and I'll do a couple right to left putts. So I'll keep this station in and I'll hit a couple here in the beginning. Again, checking whatever fundamental things I'm working on. So if you have a couple things in your stroke that you're working on here, now would be the time to do those and give yourself feedback on it. So once I've done my station, I gather my feels, I wanna get a uphill left to right putt three to five feet and I want to transfer those same feels now into something a little more course like so I'll actually start from behind the ball I'll do a little bit of a routine and then I'm gonna hop up and I'm gonna try and get my same feels on a left to right putt and a right to left now I've added a T in um, so I can start to practice my green reading match my read with my speed so we'll try from about here and I'm gonna go through the same pieces that I have my station, pretend I still have my station in, and work through the same feels I had from the other side. So that was a little bit fast with the pace, but I think the line there is good on that. So let's go ahead and try one more. Lining up to my T, same sort of feels for me as over there. And there we had a good pace with good line. And as I'm doing this, you know, I'm also practicing my green reading. I see my T in there, I'll adjust that as needed, adjust my speed. Uh, to match that. So let's see if that's still good right there. Good. And then after I do about maybe three of them, now I missed my first one. I hit a little bit too hard, but I made my second three. My, my read was good. My speed was pretty good. And I felt good about my stroke. What I'll do now is I have the option of either going back to my practice station, if I wasn't comfortable with my performance there, or hopping on the right to left putt. Now I feel pretty comfortable with my, my performance, so I hit it pretty good, so I'll go right over to my right to left putt, right? So kind of same thing, three, four, five feet, but finding a right to left one. So I'll grab these three balls. It doesn't need to be a perfect spot here like this, but somewhere over here to the right, and I wanna see if I can make a couple, same thing. I'll grab my tee back, which the reed should be in about the same spot. I'll grab my tee back, and I kinda like just outside right edge here and I'll see if I can go through those same feels now with this putt. Now my goal would be eventually, as I work through this, to maybe do like three with the gate, three from left to right, three from over here, and make all nine of them, right? So like, and then do several rounds of that as I go, especially if I'm doing pre-round, I wanna get my confidence up with my short distance. And then if I'm not making these putts, I wanna determine, is it because my read is off? Is it because my speed is off? Or do I need to go back in the station and work my cans? But ideally, I'd kinda of do three to five at each spot without missing one would be what I would expect out of myself eventually. Then we could just scale that. I like about right edge there, try and go through the same feels. I'm gonna putt all of these from the same spot. So, I mean, I could also kind of move the spot and make it add a layer of difficulty, but I'm gonna put them from the same spot. I think that right edge should be good. Same feels.
Okay, that's a little bit low edge, but I still think that reads good. So I got to work a little bit better on start line. Cool, that was a little bit of a push. So I do three over here, three centered, three to the left. And again, depending upon my performance, I decide, hey, what am I going to do next? What I would do now is I'd go back, hit about five to 10 with my gate, do the left to righters, do the right to left ones um, again until I get to the point where I feel like I'm not going to miss any of these putts. So quick little putting uh, routine, get the start line down, get your stroke down, make some short distance. If you had more time, what I would do is add in speed control, add in some 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 footers, play some games with that. And then I do a short distance or a two putt game at the end so I could win my way off the green. Always when I'm doing short game practice, I wanna win my way off the green with an up and down game with chipping, with a make 10 in a row from you know eight feet, whatever the deal is, or two putt nine holes in a row, you wanna win your way off the green. But this is how I do a quick um, little putting practice, combine that with a chipping practice. You should be able to do that in 15 to 20 minutes pre-round or just if you have a little lunch break. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you liked the video, please do us a favor, click the like button down below. Click the notification bell. Also, please subscribe if you haven't. Another reminder, we are live every Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on YouTube. Would love to see you guys there. Thank you.